So there's a concept out there that the Lakers are going to win this series because the refs are rigging it for them. And I'm sick of it. I think that it is just the most casual take of all time. And really, if the NBA was trying to rig it, wouldn't they try to make every game super duper close? And then in game seven, it doesn't really matter to them who would win because both of these teams gain such a big following. And look what we've had. We've had two blowouts. So obviously the NBA isn't rigging it and giving the Lakers more fouls or more free throw attempts. Last night, the Lakers had 21 fouls committed and the the Warriors had 22. So yes, you could say, oh, well then that's like pretty even, but then the free throw difference is massive. And yeah, the free throw difference is massive because the Warriors shot 17 and the Lakers shot 37. So the Lakers shot 20 more. But think of the players on these two teams. On the Warriors, the best players are Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. Offensively, the best players are Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, or Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole. Where do those guys play? Mid-range, out. Now, Curry will drive it sometimes. Wiggins will drive it a good amount too, but he likes to shoot a lot of mid-ranges and threes as well. Think of the Lakers now. Their best players. LeBron James, he gets the bucket. Anthony Davis, always down low. Always. And then Austin Reeves, who is also great at getting to the bucket. And he's one of the best foul drawers in the league. So, obviously, the Lakers are going to get more free throw attempts because they are shooting closer to the basket. It's a lot more rare to get fouled on a mid-range jump shot or a three-point jump shot than a layup. And factually, the Lakers just take more layups and they're better at defending without fouling. You look at the players on their team, LeBron James has had multiple games getting two, three blocks per game. Anthony Davis has the most blocks this playoffs and uh, he has a lot of steals as well. The Lakers as a whole have a lot of blocks and a lot of steals this playoffs. They're just a pretty dang good defensive team on the interior, especially um, like closer to the basket. So I don't like this argument and I don't see, I don't see any logical conclusion that points towards all oh, the refs are rigging it. Why are the Lakers getting so many foul calls? They're not, they're getting a fair amount of foul calls. And that's just true in the regular season. Who was the worst team at fouling? Who fouled the most? The Warriors. They were one of the worst. Who was one of the best at not fouling? The Lakers. Who was one of the highest in free throw attempts? The Lakers. Who was one of the lowest? The Warriors. So you're telling me that the refs rigged it the entire season all the way up until now? No, it's just not true. It's just not true. And Austin Reeves is one of those players, especially in the end of the regular season, he draws a ton of fouls because he's so crafty. And then Anthony Davis draws a ton of fouls. LeBron doesn't get as much as you probably would think, but he gets fouls. He gets fouls called, uh, foul calls to go his way sometimes. Not as much as he deserves, um, or at least he did in the regular season, but I think they're doing pretty good in the playoffs so far. So it's, it's just a stupid, stupid argument. You also look at um, I can't check mid-ranges. I'm sure there is a way I could. But three-point attempts, the Lakers had 31 in this game three. The Warriors, they had 44. So, obviously, the Lakers are going to get more fouls, foul calls their way. Or they're going to get more free throws. The fouls, like I said, the fouls was pretty close. But it's just the free throw difference. And that's because, let's look, let's just look at... Can I look at two-point field goals or just field goals in general? I think, I don't, okay, field goals in general. The war, the Lakers shot 80. The Warriors, they shot 91. And they shot how many more threes? How many more threes did they end up shooting? They shot 13 more threes. So that doesn't really help me. I wish I could see like how many twos they shot. But the Lakers definitely shot more shots in the paint. And the Lakers or the Warriors didn't have Kavon Looney in the starting lineup. So he's like their guy that would get a lot of fouls probably because he is in the paint. He would draw a lot of fouls. 
but he didn't play a ton. Draymond Green doesn't really look to score, so he's not going to get fouled a ton. And so Michael Green is a three-point shooter. So you think of everyone in that rotation. Steph Curry, we already talked about him, three-point shooter. First thing you think of with all these guys. Steph Curry, three-point shooter. Jordan Poole, three-point shooter. Dante DiVincenzo, three-point shooter. Klay Thompson, three-point shooter. Andrew Wiggins, mid-range shooter. Uh, sometimes gets he gets the bucket a good amount too. He's probably the he probably draws the most fouls on the team. I would say, percentage wise of him having the ball, uh, I, I, that's just a guess. Then Draymond, facilitator. Kevon Looney, you think of rebounding and being in the post, so he would he would hypothetically draw a lot of fouls. Moses Moody. I don't really even know what Moses Moody does honestly. He's kind of just on the floor. I feel I don't know. Moses Moody's a little weird one. And that's basically their whole rotation. The Lakers, okay, let's go through it, I guess. D'Lo, three-point shooter, and gets the bucket every once in a while. He's kind of he's an outlier. Austin Reeves gets a lot of foul calls, or gets draw, draws a lot of fouls. LeBron draws fouls. Um, Jared Vanderbilt isn't really on the court for offense, so he doesn't really count either. Anthony Davis draws a lot of fouls. Dennis Schroeder off the bench draws a lot of fouls. Rui Hachimura, he doesn't really draw a lot of fouls because he shoots a lot of mid-ranges, but he does draw some sometimes. Um, And then Lonnie Walker played, and he gets to the bucket a lot, so he would hypothetically draw a good amount of fouls because he goes to the bucket a lot, but he also is a good three-point shooter. So, as you can see, one team, three-point shooters. Other team has guys that get to the basket a lot. Dennis Schroeder is a great example of a player on the Lakers that gets to the basket a ton and gets a lot of foul calls, or draws a lot of fouls, I guess. You know what I'm trying to say. So, this whole argument, it needs to be thrown away, because it's it's just not true. It's just Warriors fans and people that don't like the Lakers trying to make something up to try to, I don't know, delegitimize this win for the Lakers, like they always they always do, like the 2020 bubble, oh, I didn't mean anything. Look at the teams that are still remaining, the four last teams in the bubble, the Boston Celtics, the Miami Heat, the Los Angeles Lakers, and the Denver Nuggets. Those are four of the eight teams remaining now. Those were the last four teams remaining in the bubble. So if that doesn't say anything, I don't know what does, because those teams still have the same cores that they had in the, in the bubble, Jimmy Butler, Bam and Abayo, LeBron, Anthony Davis, um, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Jamal Murray, Jokic. Same cores. Yes, they have different supporting players like D'Angelo Russell is a change. Al Horford's a change for the Celtics. Um, I don't remember if Aaron Gordon. No, Aaron Gordon's a change. I don't think he was with the Nuggets yet. And then the Miami Heat have Kyle Lowry now. But... It's still the same core, and they're still, the bubble, was. they were good. They were good teams. You can't just say it was because of the bubble. So there are just some of those takes out there that are just really bad, and I think this is just another one of those takes that it's just like, don't even make it because you just sound like an absolute casual. So, um, yeah, guys, that's it for the video. That's all I got for you guys today. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and turn notification bells to all, though. Really appreciate that. See you guys later in the next video. Peace out, and see you guys next time.